Uh, right, so what I'm going to try and do here, this is like a, a speed paint that's also a kind of um, compositional sketch. Um, so this isn't like the thumbnails I would necessarily ask you to do last year or the ones I'm going to ask you to do uh, for homework. Um, this is a sort of a hybrid, a mashup of both, because I want you to realize that there aren't, there aren't any rules to doing this. There are different tried and tested techniques to doing it, but they're not necessarily rules. And a much like a, uh, a board game or like a card game like uh, Magic or Hearthstone or something like that, there are the rules, but if the uh, rules on the card directly contradict the main rules, then the card rules take precedent. And what I mean is that, yes, follow these techniques, but if you do find that that technique works, but I do it in this kind of way, is that the right way? That is the right way for you. But that is distinctly different from you going, I don't want to try it that way. I don't want to do it that way. Um, in fact, I don't want to do it anyway. I just want to sort of meander through it. Um, try these techniques and adapt them to your tastes. OK, so uh, this is how I currently like to set stuff up when I, I try and tackle a new painting. I want to get some reference, both for subject matter and for the structures that are going to take um, uh, part in the picture. And I want a kind of feel of another painting already done that I want to go for. And I really, really like the Scottish concept artist and illustrator Ian McHugh. Um, until like a few years ago, he was working at Rockstar doing all the Grand Theft Auto kind of games. Um, but now he's more of a freelance uh, concept artist. He worked on Solo, uh, but he also does book covers. But I really like his kind of, got a lovely kind of scratchy, loose kind of style um, that looks looser and more casual than it actually is. Because this is another thing, you know, you look at someone's artwork and it looks all um, loose. But it's actually a lot of work has gone into getting it to look that way. So what I like then is I like this. I'm going to use this as my sort of vibe because I want to do something that looks Arctic or Antarctic because I love all things to do with the film The Thing. It's one of my favorite sci-fi <coughs> horror films. So I've got a still frame from The Thing. Uh, and I've got these real life Antarctic kind of scientists just here. And I like this idea. I like Ian McHugh's idea here of having trees and then flagpoles and then another tree and then rocks. You see how there's like this line, this leading line into the painting, but made up of different verticals here, and then a few little rocks just here. And I like this photo. And I like the idea of maybe um, adding that to a kind of Antarctic kind of scene. And the idea is it's going to be some Antarctic scientist is going out from the base to sort of check on the calibrations of some instrument or something like that. But I like, what I want to do is capture a bit of a vibe of all of this. And if I arrange this on one canvas, because I mean, I've got two monitors here, obviously, at the university, but at home, I only have one monitor. Um, so I don't have the luxury of being able to look from monitor to monitor like that. So if I have it all on one canvas, then, um, you know, I don't get a, don't constantly crick my neck, kind of looking back and forth. It's all there for me to look at. So yeah, and the way I'm going to do this is a way that I showed you, I showed some of you anyway, um, last year when I sat one-on-one -on -one with you and we went through like creating simple kind of landscapes, just monochromatic ones. So it's going to incorporate some of that kind of idea, but also with some of Eitan Zana's um, concept thumbnail kind of ideas, uh, which isn't, to be honest, completely original to him. It's just he explains it really well, and I like the way he does it. So I'm going to start painting here. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm only going to use these shaddy brushes just here. Uh, you can do pretty much any painting you want with these brushes because, like my uh, module handbook uh, says, you only it's the types of brushes that are important. A gritty, textury one, a real solid, opaque one, a soft airbrushy one, and um, a sort of transparency, textury one. And everything else is just extra. Right, so we're going to start off, like all kind of landscapes, we're going to start off um, from the back coming forwards. So I'm going to go, to begin with, with this big, soft, round airbrush. But I'm going to make sure I'm actually on the brush mode, because I'm constantly 
forgetting that I'm on eraser. Um, so I'm going to make that brush. Remember, any kind of digital painting, you want your brushes to be super, super big. Only get small right near the very end. And um, I just want, I want no saturation because I'm just going to do this in black and white to begin with. So I want to suggest the sky tones. I want an oppressive kind of sky tone. So initially, I'm just going to block in some lighter and darker spots. Actually, I'm going to switch off that annoying press and hold thing. So this is a tip as well. If this is happening at home, if you're constantly getting that annoying circle appearing, go to Control Panel, Pen, Pen and Touch. You want to go to Press and Hold, Settings, and switch it off. That is so annoying trying to select colours and stuff. Uh, so do that. So I'm going to get a bit lighter here. What I want to do, I want to suggest, I want to have a general light source. I want the light to come from the top right of the image. So I'm going for a brighter, a brighter corner here. But I don't want to actually see the sun. I want the sun to be going through so many layers of kind of Antarctic blizzardy kind of cloud that it's all diffused kind of light. But what I like about this EMQ thing is that even though the light source is kind of here, it's still got a bit of lightning coming on the other side of the image. And I think that's just a, I think that's a kind of a juicy kind of touch because it's unexpected. So I'm also going to have a little bit of light just creeping in from this side as well. And then after a while, I'm going to start sampling from the values I'm already using just to fill it out. Remember, this is all on a separate layer. So if I don't like it, I can always change it easily enough. So just something like that to begin with. So I can always come back and do that, um, do more stuff to that sky. So the next thing I want to do is I want my far distant mountains, although this isn't going to be, my far distant mountains are not going to be like McHugh's, they're not going to be um, sort of secondary bits of interest. M my distant mountain is going to be more like this, this kind of, I want this kind of big dominant iceberg or ice mountain to be kind of part of it. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to switch to this brush just here, the sampled brush 10-3 and make it super big. And I'm going to paint uh, initially just with black because I'm not uh, all I want. All I'm interested in at the moment is the shape, and this is what I want you to get into the habit of when you're doing this kind of painting. It's being um, bold with your brush strokes. It's going like this, like that, that kind of boldness. And the idea is, if you're painting like this, you do big old brush strokes, and you switch to the eraser. And then you cut into it, like that. And this is how you form the features in your image. Just a second, I'm just going to get my... Bear with me a second. Thank you for your patience. So, yeah, you kind of draw and then erase out. So I'm just hitting B for brush and E to erase. And if you do it this kind of way, you can play around nice and freely coming up with that mountain shape that you want. So I want something that's kind of dominant just here. And then, whoops, and then fades away just here, comes down like this, maybe has a dip just there. It's like sculpting, it's like laying down clay and then erasing away at it. Something a bit like, a bit like that, I might 
chip away a bit more into there because I want I don't necessarily want it to look t um, you know sort of too cliched I mean that's one of the things that having a nice reference photo gives you it gives you this um, these shapes here that you wouldn't necessarily imagine this kind of dipped U shape kind of going on I'm going to go like that. Maybe I can now shrink down my brush a bit just to fine tune that kind of shape. Something like that. Now, I already realized I definitely want um, the sky to be darker and more ominous. So I'm just going to go back down to the sky level and bring up the levels which is control L or image adjustment levels and I'm just going to mess around here because I want the whole thing to feel a bit darker <coughs> overall I might get it to that kind of level go OK switch back to my airbrush and then play up some of the more directionality over here but again, I can come back to that, I can change that. So now that I've sort of come up with the, the look, the profile of this kind of distant mountain, uh, now I'm going to bring up the levels on this to sort of decide, well, this is the furthest thing back, so it's going to be, um, unless it was extremely backlit, it would not look this dark. So I'm going to gradually lift up the value until it feels like it's almost blending in with the sky behind it something like that maybe again because it's on its own separate layer and it's just a flat kind of profile at the moment I can always change my mind and come back to that now there is a big thing um, the next thing is like I know a lot of people last year or not a lot some people excuse me some people were asking well, how do you get all the detail in a mountain? You know, if you want to make it look mountainy, how do you get that detail? You can't paint every single last bit of, um, you know, rock and detail like that. Well, the way you do it is you let those big brushes work for you, those textury brushes. So, if I go up here and I use this sample brush here, the first one in the set, and I make that nice and big, I can use this. I can use the texture inherent in this brush to give me the kind of rocky feel of the mountain. But I want to have the ability to not screw up, so I'm going to do it on its own separate layer. But I'm going to make this layer a clipping layer. And the way you make it a clipping layer is you hold Alt, and you just tap between the two layers. When you see that sign, that little icon, you know you're um, cooking on gas. So now anything I paint in this layer will only show up on stuff that has been already done on the layer below. So if I just go to a vivid red, you see, it kind of nicely cuts that out. So I can paint these highlights now on the mountain without worrying about going onto the sky or anything like that. Lots of you, I'm sure, already know this, but some of you don't. So this is for those people. So I'm going to sample the color, or the value, because we're not doing any colors at the moment. Sample, sample the value of this mountain. I'm just going to make it a tad brighter, not too much brighter, because again it's in the distance and so the contrast between the values gets uh, less the further back in the scene that you get. And I'm just going to sort of, because I'm painting, because I've got this layer mask here, I don't have to worry about painting up everything else, I can just just draw something down like that. This is proper Bob Rossi this is. This is when Bob gets the old uh, knife out and starts doing the highlights on his mountains. And you just lightly two hairs and some air <laughs> over it like that see let the texture in the brush give you those kind of high, those kind of rocky that ro kind of rocky feel okay and don't just paint it on the edges suggest the stuff happening with inside the actual profile as well this brush is great for this kind of stuff doing it right near the base here because I want this to kind of be water so you can kind of suggest that um, this kind of rocky slopes are coming in towards the water. Just 
dab it like this right now it's on its own separate layer remember so you can come in and you can start erasing out of it where you don't think it should be and remember you're using Photoshop you're using a digital medium so you might as well use um, undo control Z if you don't like the look of something I don't want to put too much detail in here at all it's not really the point of the image I want it just enough that when it comes to the end you feel like you can see some rock kind of happening in there okay now again it's on its own separate layer so if I think well that's it's too contrasty well I can bring up the levels and I can fiddle around and get that looking just how I want it to look I don't want it to look like it's just hinting at some rock uh, and then I can go yeah whatever I'll come back to that later because it's on its own separate layer um, let's now sort of suggest a watery kind of surface kind of next okay so let's create a new layer and making sure that I've got um, the brush selected I'm gonna just put a kind of a full-on bright white at the moment and I'm going to do the old technique in Photoshop that again I know some of you have used and I'm glad that you use it let's create some some mess you know all over vary the size of the brush maybe vary the brush itself and then cut into this going to do that. I'm just going to create this kind of um, noisy kind of blobby kind of mess because then what we're going to do then is uh, we're going to warp it into its kind of perspective by pressing control T shifting this down and then holding control like this bright white at the moment the only reason I want it bright white and kind of opaque is so that I can sort of paint into it in a bit with another clipping mask so it's just going to suggest a perspective a ground plane it's going to make it feel more solid something like that and um, again it's just bright white at the moment so I'm going to go control L and I'm going to bring it all down a bit because I want it quite subtle I just want it to I want you to feel like you can just there are little bits of ice or something floating in um, floating in this kind of water and I'll show you a nice trick in a moment to make that come alive speaking of the water actually um, let's actually suggest some uh, some actual kind of distance kind of happening here so I'm going to create uh, another layer underneath uh, let me think about where to put it. I can always change my mind about this. So I'm going to create a layer here. Um, go to an airbrush, this kind of soft brush here. And I'm going to sort of make sure I'm on, make sure I'm on brush. And I'm actually going to put it, you know what, I'm going to put it above the mountains. Because I want to blend slightly the base of the mountains into the kind of water and then get darker have it get a bit darker as we get towards us just like this something like that um, those bits there, I've, here's a nice little thing you can do. So you can make these darker. They're not getting less opaque. They're still completely 100% opaque, but they are darker. So what I like to do is to make them a bit darker, create a clipping layer on top of them, choose that value and make it a bit brighter. And now I can suggest like sunlight is just glinting 
on some of them. And they're a bit darker over here. Okay, something like that. Um, and now when it's just a case of just building up these kind of layers now. So again, I'm going to go to this brush. This is the main brush for blocking out your forms. Uh, it can, you can use any value you like at all to begin with. So I'm going to just add Now the thing about this brush though, it ends with this kind of wedge shaped bit here. So always make sure you go back to erase and erase into it to kind of give you a nicer sort of terminating line. That and then, you know what, I'm so lazy, I'm not even going to bother painting another one. I'm just going to copy this one. I'm holding Alt, by the way, as I drag it. And to get to that little tool there, that's V. And I'm going to flip it by doing Control T and flip horizontal. And I might shrink that down a bit, position it somewhere like, like there. And I'm going to merge these two layers together because I just want to treat these as the far distant kind of um, layer. So I select both of them and do Control E. So I'm going to go back into my eraser. Let's tidy this edge up. Now I want to suggest this kind of motif of um, uh, sort of lines, uh, sort of vertical lines coming out. So I want to suggest it even now. But I'm going to make these really, really little because I want these to feel like they're miles, and well, not miles away, but you know, they're a good distance away. Make sure again that I'm on brush and not eraser. And I'm going to do lots of just drawing it and then a control Z undoing it if it doesn't feel right. And I might uh, also erase into that because I want these to be really, really kind of thin and in the distance. Something like that, maybe. Again, it's on its own separate layer. It's too dark at the moment, so I'm going to control L and just lift them up. They've got to be a bit darker than this one in the foreground, in, in the far background, sorry. But they haven't got to be too dark. Maybe something like that. Um, and again, I'm going to paint in some rough indications of highlights by creating another layer on top, making it a clipping layer going to this kind of nice textured brush here, selecting that value, moving it up just a tad, and just, just beginning to suggest some kind of rocky planes happening on it. Now those ones I might think, actually I do need that to be a bit brighter, so I'm gonna go to my levels, and I'm going to lift them up a little bit because there should gradually be more contrast in values as we come towards the, the front of the image. Okay, another layer. Exactly the same thing again. A bit darker. So I want to also overlap stuff. So I don't want it all, I don't want one rock here, one rock there, one rock there, just going like this. Unless I was very deliberately going for that. I want it to feel a bit more natural. So I'm going to try and alternate. You do this with contrast as well. You try and put dark silhouettes against light backgrounds and light silhouettes against dark backgrounds. Just going to um, make your image more aesthetically pleasing and read better. So for this, I want my next kind of rocky outcrop to sort of be like this. I can afford to make this a little bit more characterful as well because it's getting a bit closer to us. Uh, 
And this is definitely going to have, I want this to have a, a very obvious, recognisable sort of flag pole coming out. So I'm going to go Maybe I'll do it the other way. Yeah, maybe that's a bit better. It's going to make it hint that it's like some kind of flag, something like that. And maybe sculpt out the shape of this. Happy accidents there happening as well. Little dints and stuff like that happening. Be on the lookout for that kind of stuff. So I'm going to sculpt out this as well. And yeah, and then I'll do another layer on top. Again, a clipping layer. Oops. Back to that kind of texture brush. Set the value, move it up a little bit. And maybe erase into it a bit. Oops. Make sure I am actually on the eraser. Something like that. Right now, here's the um, here's the thing. The next thing that's going to make it not look like just a series of uh, cardboard cutouts that come towards us. We're going to do like we have a kind of ground plane that's the water. But let's have a secondary ground plane that we're going to put the the point of the picture in <coughs> or on. Uh, so again, I'm going to make sure I'm on my brush and I'm on a nice big brush size. Darker again. This is where I'm going to determine. This is again. Um, well, I'm waiting for this. I'll tell you in a minute. Hang on. So I'm going to put in something big like this. I'll make it black actually. If I make it black. I'm less likely to be cowardly. <coughs> so this is our, our extreme foreground. And again, I'm going to use the eraser to kind of then tidy up and further refine these kind of shapes. So looking at what's going on here, looking at what McHugh kind of does here. One of the best ways of getting better quickly, as I said, is finding a bit of artwork that you like and having a good proper look at it and trying to do your own version of it. I don't think there's a, a quicker way. Okay, and now because I want to have to do another Bob Rossism, here's your bravery test. I want something bold to come in here in the foreground. So I want to be, because I've shown already that there are some flags and some flagpoles, I can get away with just showing the base of a flagpole here, and the viewer is going to know that it's a flagpole. And it just also makes for a more interesting composition because you've got this big sort of dividing line that happens in this case sort of roughly you know sort of in a in a third well not really a third let's see what it looks like if I just shift it over I don't want to create a tangent you see I don't want to get this too close to this flag because then it feels uncomfortable because actually you know, this is actually probably a good um, demonstration of that rule that the rule of thirds isn't really a rule of third it's more like a guiding theory of thirds if it doesn't work dead on the third but it works somewhere else, then fair play. Just keep it where it looks good. And I actually think that doesn't look too bad, actually. But I'm going to um, maybe not make it quite as thick. Like that. 
Okay, so now I want to sort of suggest that this kind of foreground is actually a series of rocks with some flat surfaces itself that I can put a character on. Uh, so first things first, I'm probably going to um, fill it in with some overall texture, lighter texture, rockier kind of texture. Now, so far I've only been using that brush, that brush, and that brush. Some of these brushes down here, in particular this one, are super, super nice for adding grainy, dotty, kind of noisy kind of texture, overall texture. So I'm going to use this as like a, this is almost going to be an underpainting. Um, so I'm going to go to a value like this, and I'm going to make this brush super big, because I just want to go like this. So now whatever I put on top of this, it's going to have this kind of texture showing through uh, to some extent. And I can vary the values up a little bit and down a little bit, how I see fit. Um, also, let's put it on that flagpole as well. And on levels, I'm going to just pull it down put it down a bit you know what and I'm also going to go to the underlying level and bring that up a little bit just so it's not pure black because I don't like working with pure blacks and pure whites as a personal preference uh, the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use uh, no I'm going to do I'm going to do that kind of highlight method first. So I'm going to go back up to this brush, a sort of rocky, mountainy, textury kind of brush. This time I can afford to go quite a bit lighter. But again, it doesn't matter if I choose the wrong value. It's on its own separate layer. I can always change that. I'm going to add in our foreground kind of highlights. this I might actually now begin to vary up the um, I don't want to use now all the same value I want to add try and add in some of that you know that so-called juiciness by having some bits brighter than other bits maybe I want to suggest actually some snow piled up against this flagpole creeping up the side of it. And I'm going to use, go back to the eraser, but I'm going to use now the same brush again as the eraser. So I'm still getting that, that texture showing through. The thing now to make it look like there is some actual surfaces that someone could stand on is creating another layer and starting to use the lasso tool to define areas of uh, flatness, of, of horizontal um, parts of the ground that are going to catch the light. The lasso tool is really good for this. Um, we did, I talked about selections last year, about the thing about the, uh, the lasso tool and the polygonal lasso tool is it gives you these really, really crisp, sharp kind of um, edges that are perfect for doing sort of flat bits of ground. Now I'm going to, if I hold down shift, I can add to this selection. I can do stuff like this. And I want to also bring into this as well the um, that theory of big, little and small. So I want to have larger kind of areas of flat kind of ground, but then clustered around it smaller little bits. But I don't want it, whoops, pardon me. Um, I don't want it all over the place. So let's see what this looks like. So I'm going to hide those selections. They're still there. Just do Control H to hide a selection. And um, you know what? With this brush, I'm going to put in some uh, 
areas like that. So I can see some flat kind of ground kind of areas. Now I want to have some, because we don't have much detail going on in these kind of mid-grounds and background areas, but as we get to the foreground, we've got to start suggesting things like the main key light coming in from the sun, but we also need to have some sort of bounce light, some skylight coming in to make it not look as totally graphic as it looks at the moment. So I'm going to put that behind that lit layer by creating a new layer here. And I might use this brush just here. This brush is a bit like that gritty textury one, but it's just a bit softer. And I will use a kind of kind of lightish grey. Make sure I unhide that. And I'm gonna just pull down in the direction that you kind of imagine. The ground to be in. You can also use this just to do these really light, nice sort of skylight filling in the other side. You can also do this now on the flagpole. So I like building it up this way. Now we've got like a flat surface that we could stick some person on just here. Um, but I like um, the doodling part of it, which I'm always uh, tempted to do earlier than I should. Um, I think a lot of people probably have that, that kind of doodling all over it type thing. But um, because I've built everything up so far, and I think it's going to get there, it's going to get to the point where I want it to be, I'm going to give myself the little present, the little gift of doing a little doodle layer. So I'm going to create another layer, again, because just in case I get these doodles wrong, go up to this brush here, I just love this one. Select this kind of bright snowy part. I'm just going to sketch in more snow part, but I'm going to be looser this time. I'm just going to freestyle it. And it's going to give you, I'm still going to have these sharp edges that I defined then, uh, just uh, that moment ago. But now I can kind of go in and I can maybe roughen them up in places where I need to be, where I want them to be. I can hint at other bits happening. Maybe connect up these bits. And because this is super bright, I can really sort of pile some more snow up against here. Maybe a highlight or two. Right, I'm going to actually go all the way back actually to the mountain because that mountain is way too uh, crisp against the sky. I want this to really feel more like this kind of stuff is going on, where there's so much blizzardy kind of feel to it that the atmosphere is really encroaching over the top. So I'm going to go all the way back to my mountain layer, add another layer on top of it, and I'm going to find I've got a cloud brush down here. So this brush is super nice. It's very much like the soft air brush except obviously it's got uh, like a cloud texture into it. I'm going to directly sample the sky color behind the mountain and then I'm going to just pull it back over. Again, whenever you, you, you I always say like use a big brush, use big brushes. Don't use little brushes until you're getting right towards the end. And I, I think Go for that big brush and then always assume that you've been too timid and make that brush another 10 or 20% bigger and it'll look better. So I, I almost want to completely lose these silhouettes. I want it to have that super, super Antarctic kind of storm feel. I might go a bit smaller of a brush down here, maybe lift a bit up here. Don't be afraid of losing the details that you put in. It's another thing, you know, you, you put the work and the effort in to put in that rocky texture in or put in that cool architectural detail in, but get rid of it if it makes for a better image. 
and I'm going to erase with the cloud brush as well actually. Like that. Now I can even, you know, I can go back to any one of these layers that I've done and decide whether I want some clouds. You want to separate layers out. Um, and one of the easiest ways of separating a layer is to um, put some fig, put some at um, fog, sorry, not fig, put some uh, fog or atmosphere between each one of these layers. So let's find um, this one just here, for example, this far back one. Let's add a new layer here. Nope, I don't want to delete it. Remember to make sure it's a clipping layer. Add some fog or some clouds at the base. It's going to make it feel like it's sitting. Like there's loads of little water droplets and vapor kind of building up. I'll do the same on this one as well. Something like that. Right. Um, now the actual having the actual kind of point. I want to put a figure into this. Now, um, you could totally just flat out draw your own figure and sculpt it in that way, um, but I really can't be bothered. So I'm just going to nick this guy just here um, by going to Quick Selection. Make sure I'm on the layer. Can't see my sampling all layers. No, I'm not. So I'm going to put sample all layers. I'm going to grab him as a selection, like that. And I'm going to right mouse button, and go transform selection. So I can bring, the, bring it over here. I'm going to switch off snapping as well. If, it, if things keep on snapping, and it's really good if you're doing graphic design, but obviously not so much if you're painting. Go to view, snap, and switch it off. And also snap to make sure that's set to none. Now I can kind of grow this selection and decide whereabouts would I want this guy to go. I want to put him maybe just kind of here. He's heading off from this direction. We've got the flags going from this direction. He's coming from this direction. That. So I'm going to create a new layer, and this layer is going to be. He's, this one's going to go right on the top, and this is going to be my person layer, my figure layer. I'm going to choose roughly the same values as the rest of the foreground for this. So I've got a figure looking like this. Now, um, if I create another new layer on top of that, make that a clipping layer, I can just hint at the different parts of his body. I don't need to go overboard with it. You, this is a speed paint. This is like a sketch. This isn't something final. And to be honest, even on a final kind of concept art kind of piece, look at the figures and they'll often be pretty rough. So I'm going to just hint at little bits of his clothing here by picking that, going a bit brighter. I'm going to erase away the bits that I don't want. I'm going to sort of suggest, I think, a little seam line in his coat. Just like a bit where his uh, hood goes over like that. And I'm going to mess around with the levels because I think it's too bright. More like that. And I quite like these little, this is another thing you see that you won't get if you don't have reference. I could just draw some kind of person with a um, jacket on and stuff like that, but it wouldn't inspire me, it wouldn't make me think, oh yeah, we've got these darker patches here on sort of the underside of the arms. And it's adding little tiny details like that that are going to make your stuff look, um, well, just more interesting, more sophisticated. So I'm going to go in here and just kind of erase away here and 
here. And I'm going to begin to just put, I'm gonna have one more layer on top that I'm going to use to suggest a little bit of lighting on this guy. Um, and I might use this brush here, which is slightly transparent. So I'll select, oh, make sure I'm on brush. Select this and go a bit brighter to kind of make sure there's some light happening on his shoulders. that and um, maybe a bit darker on his legs and it's probably too bright at the moment <laughs> so I can always bring that down make it more subtle and go back up to this kind of brush and go brighter again to kind of pick out I want to make sure that I'm working quite far out. And I like these little chevron shapes on his, on his legs actually, they're quite nice. Something like that. We're getting to the point now where we can almost move to that um, last kind of 10% where we make it look um, obviously sketchy and a bit rough to having a little bit more atmosphere and a little bit more punchiness kind of going on. Um, the way I like to do that is to um, set the whole thing. So I like to control click into this layer mask here. So I'm only selecting uh, this actual active part of the canvas and control shift c to copy merged and when you create a new uh, document it's going to remember the dimensions of your image and go create paste that in i'm actually going to shrink this down a little bit i think as well probably just going to make this 2048 like that. Um, right now, I want to sort of vignette it because I, I, it's still not as dark and, and uh, as oppressive as I want it to be. So I'm going to use some vignetting, but some uh, sort of user-defined vignetting to make it feel that way. So I'm going to duplicate the layer and set it to multiply. The whole thing gets a lot darker, and I'm going to create a layer mask which by default is going to be white, but I want it to be black, so I'm just hitting X to swap between black and white. And now with this soft brush here, painting in white on the layer mask, it's going to start showing what's below. So I can control where it's darker and where it's brighter. Because I also want to make it look like maybe he's caught in like a little pool of light. And if I mess around with the whole um, of this multiply layer, I can accentuate that look. So if I bring this down, so it's darker. So I'm focusing. I'm thinking about the, the mini story that's happening in the image. Some dude's going out to check the calibrations on the, um, on the Antarctic signal device. So he's what it's kind of all about, walking through this environment. So anything I can do to hammer home that feel, the better. And if that means knocking everything else to much, much darker kind of values and leaving him in a pool of light, then all the better. So I can do that kind of thing. Um, actually, you know what? On top of the whole thing, again, this is I always think this is the fun part because this is the sweetening part where you take something that was looking okay and you add all, this, all the extra um, secret special sauce. So I'm going to put some more mist and fog in general, just all over the thing. But I'm going to do it, uh, obviously, on, a, on its own separate layer, just in case I screw up. So I'm going to have some in the extreme foreground. 
so I'm getting that brighter against darker kind of feel and I might go to the eraser and the same brush and raise into that so I get like these tendrils of kind of um, cloud and smoke kind of drifting up almost begins to look more volcanic than icy now but I don't really care because I like the look of it so kind of do that kind of thing um, let's just mess around very very briefly we're getting some kind of color scheme on this uh, I'm going to use the color lookup adjustment layer and which is um, kind of actually mm, let me think let's just have a look through here see what we've got these are kind of like fancy Instagram filters so I quite like that in fact I like that a lot that gi that's given me that kind of uh, dark scary kind of feel I want. I don't particularly like the fact that these mountains now are almost completely dropping off into darkness behind this atmosphere. Maybe there's a break in the clouds just here. Now remember, because these are done as an adjustment layer, I can control where this happens and I can control the amount of this that's happening. And I can have more than one, so I might have another one on top. I'm just going to hide that one temporarily. See if I can find a warmer one. Just using the mouse wheel here to scroll through the different um, lookups. Oh, it's tempting. I kind of like a bit of that in, but I don't want too much of that in. So what I'm going to do is there they are both combined on top of each other I only want a little bit of this one so I'm going to make the layer mask black so none of it's there and I'm just going to dial in the amount that I want with the airbrush probably more to do more here so just a bit of warmth happening oh I'm erasing <laughs> that would be white Subtle, subtle bits of warmth happening in the top part of the image. And also, what I might do is just overall have another layer that's set to color dodge and choose a slightly warmer color. This might take a bit of experimentation and just slightly color dodge some stuff that happens just here. a bit too saturated let's try something more like that not too saturated a bit further down Make that brush big yeah oh yeah you see that's what I'm looking for that's what you should all be looking for these kind of weird color vibrations that begin happening and I might actually try and color dodge a bit on there but maybe not maybe I'll eat out a bit of that just there um, okay, just a couple more things to do on this, I think. Um, I'm going to look up online, um, look up abstract painting. And this is something that John Park likes to do a lot, is use an abstract painting as almost like an underpainting. But again, a bit like Shadi Safadi, he kind of does the underpainting right at the very end, which is the opposite of what you would do if you were traditionally painting, obviously. So what I'm looking for is an abstract painting that's just got some nice textures and colours. Maybe even something like that. It's a bit pale, but I can just saturate that up. So I'm going to copy that. 
and paste it on top. And uh, I might just mess around with the hue of it, maybe. Darkness of it, saturation. Oh, yeah, that's the kind of stuff I like. And I want to make it kind of big. Like this. I'm going to switch it to overlay. Oh, oh, that's doing some stuff. It's too much, but it's doing some interesting stuff. What about soft light? It's doing similar, a bit different. But I mean, now you just want to pull that down a little bit because you don't want it too obvious. Maybe something like that. Now I can't help it. I'm going to have to put a curves on top of the whole thing because I do like curves when it comes to controlling colors because curves lets you change the overall contrast of the image but you can also adjust the contrast on the individual channels so I can in general lift up the blues of everything from the shadows and pull them down maybe from the highlights And I can do maybe similar things with the greens. Hmm. Don't know how I feel about that. But I can control how much of that happens. I'm going to do now one more control all, one more control shift C to copy merge and then paste. The absolute all important thing, sharpen your image. bring out some of that texture and make the whole thing pop a little bit more. Put a layer on top, fill it with middle grey, put some noise in that, set that to overlay as well and maybe bring that down a little bit. And um, give it a border by extending the canvas. Whoops. So 130, I just do 130%. And I'm going to make sure, obviously, anything in the far background is just. Yeah, it's getting the color layer, isn't it? What we'll do, we'll do that separately in a moment. We'll do, uh, switch that out. I'm just going to do Control A, Control Shift C, and paste it one more time into a new document. Canvas size. Crop it. If I hold down Alt and you crop, you crop equally from both directions. And I'm going to call that kind of done as my sort of spooky walking into the Antarctic uh, might be devoured by a shape-shifting alien, you never know, kind of uh, <laughs> picture. Uh, OK, so I hope that you can see that everything I did there, you should kind of already know. It's about playing with, having, having some knowledge, obviously, about what happens in a landscape, knowing that your values become less contrasty as you go towards the background. Um, you should know that by now. And, you sh and it's an easy thing to do. To you know, It's just literally just doing exactly what it says on the tin, just making all your details less contrasty the further away they are. But then if you work in this kind of um, layered way where you're using big massive brushes and you're putting down the mark and then cutting back into it, you can come up with a composition uh, super easily and super freely and not be too stressed out about it. Um, 
I would recommend, I mean, I think it's a great setup to just try and come up with your own compositions completely off the top of your head. It's a great thing to try and do that, but don't think that, again, that that's the only way to do it. If you know the kind of picture that you want to do, then find that kind of picture and do that kind of, that kind of composition. You don't have to slavishly copy it. Mine is not a complete copy of Ian McHugh's. It just found the inspiration, that, that idea of the kind of loose, scratchy style and these kind of vertical lines receding into the background. That's how then I come up with this kind of look. <clears throat> and I hopefully also you realise that um, doing paintings, and I, I know I've said it before in the last year to some of you, maybe all of you, that um, doing this kind of, doing painting paintings Actually, regardless of whether it's a photo bash thing, whether it's a painter thing, or whether it's a CG thing, uh, you have to kind of be in it for the long run. You have to have faith that it is going to look OK if you just keep on going at it. Uh, because it can look like trash for ages. And then in that last moment, the kind of magic kind of happens. Um, so just be brave and don't be fearful um, and just keep on trying at it. So uh, I'm going to switch this off now because YouTube doesn't need to know what your homework is. Uh, 